Are you interested in making some money from wood carving? Or would you like to start up a business around the scroll saw projects that you do? Well, in this video, we're going to share some ideas that can be used as the basis for your own wood carving or scroll sawing business. Our starting point then is the product itself. Now, there's a number of ways that you can approach this, but some thoughts and tips that might be useful are to think of things that are actually useful items, practical items. When we first started, the love spoon, it wasn't the focus of our business. We used to make all sorts of different items like egg cups. Um, we used to make a lot of key rings, clocks, barometers, thermometers, money boxes. So that's our first tip is to think of products that are useful to people that could be easily made and a good source of income for beginning your woodworking business. Other things you might want to think of are trends. So things that are trending can be a good way to find a niche for yourself in woodworking. Occasions, Christmas. So as an example, Christmas tree decorations. They're a popular item. We find that we're busy around Valentine's Day, but you have other occasions that might be useful to concentrate on. Easter, Mother's Day, birthdays. Think of occasions and celebrations when people are looking for gift items. So that's another tip is to target trends and occasions as a basis for making a range of products. Another tip comes down to the materials. When you're starting out, we always suggest trying to keep costs down. So if you go and spend a lot of money on very beautiful woods that's been processed and ready for you to work in, it makes life easier. It can make your product more appealing, but it's more expensive. We recycle and reclaim a lot of what we do, which makes it a benefit from a business point of view because it keeps your costs low, but it also makes it appealing that you are an eco-business and you are conscious of protecting and preserving the environment around you. So as an example, we have a tree planting project where we plant hundreds of trees in the field close to us. Other tips that we can offer you are the tools. So when you first start out, it can be very tempting to think that the tools are going to make the ultimate difference to what you do. But it's not necessarily the case. Start off with simple tools and as you go along, you will see different things that you feel you might need to improve what you're doing. So for wood carvers, a few gouges can be sufficient to do the job that you need. For scroll sawers, you can start off with a scroll saw and then add equipment to assist you as you go along. Another tip is time. Now time is precious and for a woodworker especially, time can be the greatest issue of all. And one of the questions we get asked most is how to price the work that you do. And the answer is, it's very difficult. Getting your price right is one of the biggest challenges, in my opinion, woodworkers face. We're surrounded by products that are produced using cheap labor, 
using mass production and this creates an idea that the products can be made for next to nothing. But you as the maker have to take control. How much is your time worth? And from here you can develop a pricing structure accordingly. My tip would be to price what you do fairly. What is a fair price for the amount of time you have spent working? If you stick to that rule of pricing fairly for the customer, in the long run, everyone is happy. You're happier making it and the customer is happy because the finished job will be the right price for the amount of work and effort that you've gone to. So for this video, that's probably my number one tip, is to get the pricing right and from the outset, get it clear in your head the right price for the time that you are investing in your work. Another tip is to have a story and a message. What is your work all about? For me, it's an extension of ourselves, of our beliefs. We put the things that are important that we hold dear to ourselves. We share them through the work that we do. We're fortunate working with Love Spoons. Love is in the name of what we do. But that is the message that we try to put across in our work. We share a message of love with everyone. So having a story and a message gives your work more meaning, more individuality, and more appeal to potential customers. Another tip I can give to you is to take advantage of modern technology, social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, the list goes on. Use the ones that you're comfortable with, take advantage of it. It's a fantastic method for sharing your work with your customers and future potential customers. Share photos, share your ideas. You develop a community around yourself where everyone can benefit. We try to make more and more videos here on YouTube. We love to be able to share what we do with you all. It also allows us to share the work that we do but hopefully you as the viewer can benefit from some of the ideas, the methods and the tips that we share with you. The idea is to develop community and together we all grow and develop. Another area to look at when we're talking about setting up businesses, earning a bit of money from the work that you do and that's to do with competition. Now the reality is, whatever you do in life, there's gonna be competition. So whatever business or whatever you decide to do, you're gonna have competitors. So my tip is don't worry about it. Don't focus on it. Don't put too much attention to it. Put your energy and your efforts and your focus on your own work. That way you'll give yourself clarity and direction and you won't be distracted by the things going on around you. This leads on to another tip and that's planning. If you're looking at your competition and you're worried about your competition, that can influence greatly what you're doing. So if you concentrate on what you're doing, it allows you to plan out your own direction, to chart your own course, and to do the things that you would like to do and that you think are best for yourself. A final tip then that leads on from that as well, and that's enjoy what you're doing. It's great fun, 
We're very fortunate being able to make a living from wood carving and scroll sawing is a privilege and we're very grateful that we're able to do that. So whatever you choose to do, whatever your choice is, make sure you're happy with it and you enjoy it. You'll be more productive in the long run. So there we go. That's our list of tips that will hopefully help some of you if you're interested in making money from wood carving and scroll sawing. Let me know in the comments section which one of those tips do you plan on using. If that's been useful, you can give us a thumbs up. If you're new here and you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. When we upload another video, you'll find out about it. And as always, thank you again for watching.